Hello, mommy. Mama. The mom's so. Oh, lady. Mother. Dear moms, being a mother is a full-time job. You have to be selfless. Forgiving. Always loving. Mentally sharp and amazing. Thank you for being our mommies. Our Minister of Finance. Money, 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 money. To all mothers out there, for all the times you gently picked us up when we fell down, for all the times you tied our shoes and tucked us into bed, for everything we shared, the dreams, the laughter, and the tears. I love you with a special love that deepens every year. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Mwah. Happy Mother's Day. I love you, Mama. Happy Mother's Day. You're pretty. You're beautiful. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you for picking us up when we are down. We love you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy, happy, happy Mother's Day. Hallelujah. We love honoring the moms here. Hallelujah. Give me that gift there. All the moms, all the moms, all the moms. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, how I wish we could give you all the gifts, but unfortunately we can't give you. You may be seated, mothers, but we thought we needed to honor some of our um, uh, 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 pastor's wives, Mama Kubo, and then would you please? No, let's get another one. And I think I've got one for Mama Kubo, I've got one for Mams Kosana as well. God bless you, ma'am. We just wanted to honor you for standing behind the men of God. We love you, we celebrate you. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Um, there's another one for Mams Kosana. Parama Mams Kosi. We just want to honor you. We thought you were going to come for the third service, but we honor you. Thank you. And for standing behind, you know, the, the men of God. We love you. We celebrate you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, so good to see you once again this morning. Are you good, Bazalwane? Uh, it's always a privilege to stand in front of you. Welcome those who are joining us online. Let me tell you, um, I'm standing here by the grace of God. Last night I was down uh, with this terrible flu, actually COVID, though I need to confess. And uh, I was not sure that I'll be standing and administering this morning. Hallelujah. So we thank God who has preserved us. Continue to pray for us. And then we appreciate your prayers. Your prayers keep us going. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Today, as we celebrate Mother's Day, my topic simply says, challenging the course of history. That is what I want to talk about. Challenging the course of history. And I want us to look at few biblical characters who changed the course of history. Specifically, women characters in the Bible. I want us to look at them. Some of them, they had a wonderful career. They started well. They finished well. They were great women of God, honored in the presence of God. Some of them did not start well. Their background was not that good at all. But at the end of the day, they changed the course of history. And from these women, we will draw a few lessons from them so that we can use them to change the course of our events. Are you with me, Basalwan? So we're going to use them, those lessons from them, so that we can apply them today to change the course of our event. If you are writing down, would you please write this statement? You might forget everything, but don't forget this. History is history today. Because there were people in the past who challenged the status quo of the day. Did you hear what I said, Pastor Juan? I said history is history today because there were people in the past who challenged the status quo of the day. That is why we call that history. When you look at that word history, 
It is history because there's a word there, story. Can you see the word story there? In every history, there's a story. And that is why it is called history. These people are people who refused or allowed things to remain the same or as they were planned. In life, there are things that are planned so that they can proceed and affect our life in a different way. But the people who have made history are the people who refused or allowed things to remain the same. So when you look at the word, the statement changing the course of history, it simply means tampering or interfering with process of cause and effect. Don't miss that. The process by which one thing leads to another. The people who have done science, they know that there is this thing that we call the law of cause and effect. The law of cause and effect, it simply means, or it states that every single action in the universe produces a reaction, no matter what. Did you hear what I said, Pastor Ron? The law of cause and effect states that every single action in the universe produces a reaction. It's what we call cause and effect. Things, they don't just happen. You don't just wake up in the morning and say, I have gained weight overnight. There's a cause for that. I was trying to wear another suit this morning. Martin, my father is young. I mean, I low, was the Lord. There's a cause. There is something that I have done, and somewhere, somehow, I was not aware. Maybe I was abusing soda. Maybe I was eating too much pap. I cannot blame the devil. I cannot blame the demons. There's a cause. I have done something and there are results. Isn't as man is the answer? You know, historical change takes place through the law of cause and effect. When we say we are celebrating the women who have changed the course of history, it is because these are the people, when things were placed in place, they refused. They said, we're not going to allow for the things to remain as they are. We need to change the course of event. And I want us to, to look at few of these characters this morning. Here is the first or the first two characters that blesses my spirit. In the battle there, this, these two women is a, a, a Shifra and, and Power. The Bible says they were, they, they were Hebrew midwives. Listen to me. When the king gave orders for the Hebrew babies to be killed, these women, they refused to follow the order of the day. Here is an evil king. He wants to tamper with the future of the next generation. Because when you kill boys, you are not just killing boys, you are tampering with the next generation's future. An evil king comes with a plan because his throne was, was, was at stake and now he wants to, 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 to kill the babies, the boys. When you read in the book of Exodus chapter 1, listen to what verse 15 says. In verse 15 it says, The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, whose names were Shifra and Poa, when you are helping the Hebrew women during childbirth on the delivery stool, if you see that the baby is a boy, listen to this king, kill him. But if it is a girl, let her leave. Power 
Atle pezulu kusaini wa itenda. Udmalabula awe. I strongly believe you offered them money or some kindness or a better treatment. Would you listen to me? If it's a boy, kill. If it's a girl, there's no threat. And then verse 17 says, the midwives, however, Bamba, feared God and did not do what the king of Egypt had told them to do. They let the boys leave. They let the boys leave. I said to you, changing the course of history, it is tempering or interfering with the process of cause and effect. The king wanted to temper with the proper history. He wanted to produce a negative history by killing the boys. But two women, they decided that we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. The Bible says they feared the Lord and they said, we're not gonna allow the boys to do. You know what they did, Barcelona? They changed the course of history. They changed the course of history. If these two women did not stand in the gap, let me tell you, the Bible that we are carrying right now wouldn't have the first five chapters of your Bible. You have the first five chapters in your Bible because of two women who said tender or no tender, money or no money, we refuse to step or to be a part of this evil. These women, by refusing, they changed the course of history. And I strongly believe that today there are many women who are fearless. I'm thinking of Busi Mavuso. Remember Busima Fuso and many more. Busima Fuso in a meeting, board meeting, yet has come. I think she was the only woman, if I'm not mistaken. The rest of the men are bowing down to the system of this world. I'm a daughter named Jebe. I said, you board meeting. It is a song as you are suffering electricity. You know, everybody, the business is struggling. And men, are, they are there, they are busy massaging one another. But one woman, she was bold enough to say, hey, hey, listen, we cannot bow to the nonsense here, ANC. She just mentioned that. And then blunt, she mentioned. Oh, I know my baby, it's a woman. I'm a daughter, Allah. I thought I'm a brown envelope. Allah, I'm a daughter. A woman says, let's call a spade a spade. Trying to intimidate her. How will history remember you for failing to stand? History will never remember cowards. But people who stand in the midst of storm and stand for the truth, history will remember them. So these two women, they did exactly that. But the story, as Moses, is not complete if you don't put it together with the story of Jacobet, which is the mother of Moses. Is the mother of Moses. When the Egyptian began killing the male babies of Hebrew slaves, Jacob had refused to abort God's mission. She came up with a plan to advance the mission of God. Here you are, children are being killed. And even if they found you having a baby, and in trying to hide that baby, probably they'll kill the baby and also kill you. But listen to what the Bible says. I love it. When you read Exodus chapter 2, a beautiful story, it says, Now a man of the tribe of Levi, of, of Levi married a Levite woman. So you'd realize that, you know, there's a purpose of God here. Right from the beginning. And the Bible says, and this woman, she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. This is Moses. When she saw that he was a fine child... 
The Bible says a fine child. One translation says an unusual baby, an unusual child. The Bible says she hid him for three months. Here is the mother. In the midst of chaos, where children have been killed, other parents have accepted the order of the day. Maybe now, I accept the order of the day. You know, maybe she was praying, Lord, let it be a girl. Because those days there were no scans. So if you're falling pregnant, you're falling pregnant at your own risk. And she was surprised to see a baby boy. And obviously she was nervous because she knew what is the rule of the day. But the Bible says when she looked at the baby, she realized that, no, 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 no. This one is not a usual baby. That is what the Bible says. She's not a normal baby. And she had to hide him for three months. But when she could not hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with a tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. You know, you remember that story. And the Bible says, I want you to see another young girl here. Women shaping history. His sister stood at the distance to see what would happen to his brother. That is Miriam here at young age. And verse 5 says, then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile, you know, to bath. And her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slaves to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. She knows why this baby was there. She knows. Why this baby was there. Then his sister, remember this young girl, then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, because she was standing there, she went and asked Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Look at the wise sister. Smart woman, cunning woman, but in a beautiful way. Can I ask her so that she can nurse this baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. She got the baby's mother. <laughs> and Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this baby and nurse him for me. And I will do what, Bazalwane? I will pay you. Oh my goodness me. God has his own ways, you know, of advancing his agenda. As long as you fear him, as long as you position yourself, as long as you take a first step, God will make sure that he puts things together. The day this woman realized that this is not an ordinary child, I am going to save her. God made the daughter of Pharaoh to go and take the bath on the very same moment. And not only that, God is able to make the enemy to pay to advance the kingdom of God. Now here is the mother. Here is the mother. She's raising this baby. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. And nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. Here's the woman. She's raising this child. I love the scripture. When he was old enough, when he became a son. Oh my goodness me. You see, there's a child and there's a son. Sons are home builders. When you look at that word son, it says a home builder, a generation builder, a generation preserver. Now, this woman, she brings Moses to Pharaoh's daughter. She took her as a child. Now she's, pre she's presenting him as a generational builder, as a home builder. She says, here is your son. 
She doesn't know. Uguti, in the inside of this boy, the system has changed. The hard drive has changed. It is not the hard drive of the Egyptian. She put the different hard drive in the inside. Yes, Bazalwane. Is it a hard drive or a soft drive? Hard drive. Usama Pelungenable is a computer. The engine is sincere, Bazalwane. It's sincere, the engine. Napande. He told you what? Go to the engine. Say PMW. We are Tata Ufaro. Napande. Ubodi Toyot. Go to Napagati. It's a different engine. And this engine is among the Egyptian. Oh my goodness me. I am talking about a woman who changed the course of history. She understood that when God is giving me a child, I have a responsibility to develop this baby, to develop this boy to become a son so that he can affect the next generation. No wonder when the Egyptians were fighting each other did not bother him. But when the Egyptian we're fighting the Hebrews. The Bible says something in the inside of him did not allow him to look at things because he was raised in the palace, the Egyptian palace, but as a Hebrew boy. How many of us, Barcelona, who can say in this secular world, in this secular world, we have raised our children in a godly manner? How many of us can actually look at the system of this world after training your child and now she's about to go to university and you can say to the lecturer, here am I, I am giving you my daughter, I am giving you my son because I know I have trained them to face the system of the world. Whatever you have in the university is not going to affect them. How many of us can stand and do this? And may the good God have mercy on us, Barcelona. Because we have never come to a place where we embrace our own things. We're taking our children to secular schools. What are they training? What are they training them for? How are they preparing them? Who's feeding them? What doctrine are they giving? While we are not supporting our own things. We are giving them the hard drive of the world but if we are going to change the course of the event we need to do it in a different way later on we see a young man becoming a leader oh my goodness man we see a young man becoming a leader you know the story he comes back after running away comes back to Egypt as a leader now to deliver God's people he comes back to deliver God's people. Utufaro, Utufaro. Okay, on a hamba, hamba. But at a bonke, but at a bonke. You know, go to a shear, shear imal, shear the, shear the gold, shear the, 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 the flock. Utu Moses. No, 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 no. We are taking our children. We are taking our wives. We are taking everything with us because we don't know what is it that the Lord will want in the near future. When the devil tried to negotiate and say, take the wives and leave the children he says no 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 i know you devil when you are after the generation we are living here not only with men and women but we are living here with our children because the future depends on the lives of the young generation changing the course of history women stood in the gap and changed the course of history how I wish, Masalwane. There are some sermons when you preach them. Maybe you can identify with me. I'm not big into Mother's Days and Father's Days. And it's not that we not have to celebrate. I'm not big in that. You know, when you grow up without a father and it becomes sensitive. Some of you are in that space, but we can't stop celebrating because we don't have one. And Mother's Day becomes sensitive as well. I don't have a mother. But 
There's a moment where I wish, how I wish my mom was here. How I wish she was here to come and look at his boy. Just to come and look at his son. How I wish she was here to say, here goes my son. Here goes my boy. Preaching the word of God. Because she stood, Barcelona. As much as they were pushing her to abort me. Praise the name of Jesus. By the grace of God, she carried me for nine months. She carried me for nine months and they didn't want me. She said, Your other name will be Christopher. Simply means you'll be the Christ bearer. And look what the Lord has done. She changed the course of history. She was not a Christian, but she changed the course of history. How I wish she was here. Some of you, Bazalwane, you'll be celebrated in a circle. Because you stood ground and you did what you were supposed to do. Here is another woman by the name of Esther. By the name of Esther. You know, we need to reveal these things because it was not easy for Esther to, 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 to stand in the midst of challenges. Esther was selected in a beauty pageant to become queen to the pageant king. An evil king. Not just the king, a, an evil king one day when he was drunk. He calls his wife, he says, Mago parade in Japan, my daughter. In the danger, and get him for some parade of a bone. And the oh, queen Vashti says, I'm not going to do it. And the queen lost her place, her queenship, because this was a king. Now, at this moment, young girls. Because the king must choose a queen, a wife. A parade is prepared. We see Mordecai, they're playing a role to this woman. Preparing her for this position. And we know the story that Esther stepped into the palace. And stepping into the palace, it was not easy. Because she had to break the tradition to defend the Jews from destruction. It is not easy, Bazaran, when you are in a position of power to compromise what we have achieved by the grace of God. I do understand why people, they can't speak against corruption. Because you know the cost if you're going to speak against corruption. Or what you might lose. You know the benefits of a Nazo. Because never. I was just concerned about the state of our country. So you are attacking me because when you know that for me stepping in is going to cost you something. It's very simple, Bazan, to speak when you've got nothing to lose. Sometimes we judge people because we don't know, you know, with these people they are going to lose something. So I understand now why they were attacking me. Because you had something to lose. You were, you were covering yourself. Even here, Esther didn't want to act. Because she knew that her queenship was at stake. If she begins to speak according to the tradition, she might be killed. But listen to Mordecai when he's speaking to her. In the book of Esther chapter 4 verse 14. Mordecai says, for if you remain silent... At this time, the relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time. 
as this. Who knows that you have come to this position for such a time as this woman. God has given you this position. God has given you this influence. God has given you these powers. Not to have a place where power is done. Because of his salary. God has placed you in this position for such a time as this. To all of you, God that has given you a position of influence, it's your time right now to stand and defend the next generation. And I want to tell you that even if you are not prepared to stand, God will always bring a salvation from another place. But when that salvation comes, you better be careful because now in effect, you remember what our president experienced. When he came in as a president, but he, was when you were a deputy president, because these things happened, under your watch. So you can't tell us when you did not contribute. It is because you've got people of power. I'm concerned in the course of history. I need to stand. If there are things that are there are going to make our next generation to tremble, it is my role and my responsibility to remove those things so that history can remain. And when I'm no more, I can be celebrated. As an HR manager, what have you done when other people are paid less, yet they are more qualified? And they are those because of the color of their skin. They are paid more. And you are an HR manager. And you are saying nothing because they've paid you. You are content with that salary. Who knows that probably you have been called for such a time as this to fix this demon in that area. To fix that demon. You have been positioned for such a time as this. Nobody confronted that status quo. Maybe God wants you to confront that. Why should women have to sleep with the men before they are promoted? And you are aware of this. Maybe let me speak to that man. Papa was Like Sandra. Like Sandra was Siakula Songela. You remember what I said? It's, it, a church is like a hospital. Social media. With a high position. Instead of promoting somebody based on their qualities and the skill. You are promoting somebody who is not capable. Because they have slept with you. You take them, you place them on the high position. They can't even perform. I listened to the gentleman who was just interviewed, who got a, a new job to fix the cameras, the speed camera in the speed what? Speed traps cameras. Because since last year, May, there were no speed cameras at Johannesburg, but I'm a ticket at But there are no speed cameras. And many people died. The gentleman has been interviewed. Oh, but now you have come into this position. What are you going to do? Have you investigated what, why things did not go right? Really? Why are you? That is not important. Go to the same call. Hebana. Where are we heading as a country? I think it's Saban. We're not politicking. Skoloma is changing the course of history. Almost 13 years. I put the lamp for an effort TV. Almost 13 years as a country, 
we are still struggling a lot shedding. Lord shedding for 13 years. I want a direction. Not is in our kosha warm, Kelama daughters. What kosha warm? Stole my koska and get a lap of man. Stole my koska as seven. You know, listen, you may not like it, but there is something that I picked up about women leadership. In daughter, I mind the other chisanyama, in daughter, the other chisanyama, it hanging yama, a 500, I want. I can am a daughter in daughter, the other chisanyama. Abantuana le abatenga linkoma zati maga figa nti lbati baba u ulambila ta ha anumina noma ngala langenza la tata nje na ito ndi ranti ngala linkoma zmina ngala langenza unama ngauma ka usuti already so zenya maga chisa nyama wena indotale but women women the small amount of money that they have the small amount of money. We have money printing. It is the same, but in a for shopping, we are not here. Madam, can I say you are going to abantu 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 abam? Abantu abam abam. Hey, we are not going to sell the money. We are not here. Abantu abam abantu abam. We are selling abantu abam. We are selling money. We are not here. At abantu abam. Now we are going to section the abantu abam. The abantu abam. We are not going to double the suitcase. We are not going to double. In total, ah, my daughter, no man, I am going to be near you. I am going to be near you. How many times you are going to chase me? Look at the person next to you and tell them, don't be that man. Yeah. Come on, let's celebrate women this morning. Thank you. Happy, 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 happy Mother's Day. Thank you, women. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your love. Thank you for everything. That even with a small amount of money, small amount of money, look at those grand women. Look at those grand women. You know, a Maliom Den, the Malia Grant, they are still supporting their children. They're still supporting their grandchildren. You know, they support everybody. They support every. These are the grand women that we have. Come and let's all. Honor them. Let's honor them. Thank you for changing the course of history. Thank you for changing the course of history. Wow. Oh, I won't finish this. The other one I wanted to talk to, talk about, is Ruth. I'll do this with second service. It is Ruth. Because these are not perfect women. You know, when you look at the story of Ruth, Ruth was a young widow. In her grieving season, was still sensitive to obey God's voice and change the course of history. She was a young widow, but still sensitive to God's voice. Many people, when they are grieving, when they are in pain, they lose the voice of God. The mother-in-law says to Ruth, you know, go back to your people. I know you are married to my son. Go back to your people. The other sister-in-law, and she decided to go back. But Ruth, because she sends her destiny, she sends her destiny that for me to make history, I must actually make sure that I stick to Naomi. She sends her destiny. And the Bible says in verse 16 of chapter 1, Ruth replied to Naomi. She said, don't urge me to leave you. Or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people. And your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die. And where I will be buried. He says, may the Lord deal with me. Be it ever so severely. If even death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her. You know what she did? She stopped urging her. Today we are speaking about Ruth because she changed the course of history. Her story created history. When she said your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. God blessed her with a husband by the name of Boaz. And today when you look at the lineage of Jesus, Ruth, she's counted in history. 
because she didn't follow her emotions, but she followed God's destiny. Do you want to change the course of history, my dear? Do you want to change the course of history? Praise the name of Jesus. Let me give you some few qualities of changing the course of history. I do not speak about Sarah. I do not speak about Bathsheba. I do not speak about a few other women, but here are a few qualities, quickly, of changing the course of history. History makers, number one, are strong in their faith. Strong in their belief. You need to be strong in your faith. There are many things that are going to challenge your faith. We have seen people in this nation now. They have forsaken their God. They are worshipping other gods. If you want to make history, you must have strong faith. History makers number two. They are not afraid to stand alone. They are courageous. They are not afraid to be misunderstood. Those who make history, it is because they are not afraid to stand alone. Your problem is that you want to stand with many people. Of the majority. Look at all the people who made history. They were not afraid to stand alone, even if the multitude is saying yes to this. That's how you make history. Number three. They are not afraid to break limitations. Break the culture of the day. Do you want to make history? You need to break the limitations. You need to break the culture of the day. You need to do something that has never been done before. You need to do something, a point of reference. The problem is that we always refer to the past. Because you don't have a point of reference. And the truth is there is a point of reference. You are just avoiding the point of reference. The other person I contacted when I was under serious attack, it was Frank Chikan. I said, sir, tell me, am I sinning? By becoming a voice for my people. Is this sin? And the answer was, the devil has blinded the eyes of the church. We have believed a lie for too long. We have taken a back seat and we gave the kingdom to the devil. And today we are in this mess because godly men and godly women are afraid to stand because they've got so much to lose. And But I realize that people are afraid because they've got so much to lose. If you are not prepared to risk it all, you might lose an opportunity of changing the course of history. I'm telling you about your Nelson Mandela here. The man was a lawyer. He would have chosen to live a good life as a lawyer and just mind his own business. And he was put in prison for 27 years because he wanted to change the course of history. Show me a history maker who has never sacrificed. If we are a history maker, it's because there is something that you stood for. They were not afraid to break limitations. They took risk. Number five, they challenged the status quo. And finally, they were self less they were selfless
Do you want to change the course of history? Be selfless. I go court now. You have one of the problems that you are always full of yourself. My children, my family, my money, my wealth. Whatever you do for yourself, when you die, those things will be forgotten. But whatever you do for others, when you die, those things will remain and will live on. Because you stood not just for yourself. You stood for others. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you for being selfless. Thank you for standing. Would you please stand with me this morning? Thank you for watching at home. I pray that the Lord will open your eyes of understanding so that you can understand that you are called for such a time as this. Never allow your comfort zone to kill your story. Never allow your comfort zone to be a box to trap you for the rest of your life. In you, there's a story that must be told. In you, there's a story that must be created. In every history, there is a story. My question is, what is your story? What is your story? Do you want to go into the grave with your story? Without writing your story to become history? Don't die with your story. There are many books that have not been written. Who knows that God wants you to write that book? There are many companies that have not been started. God wants you to start that company. There are many schools that have not been started. You thought you are just a teacher. Maybe God wants you to write your story by starting a school, a college. I still continue to dream, Bazalwan. I still dream of a technicon. I still dream of a university. Hope Restoration University. Praise. I have never been in the university, but I believe before I go down the grave, there will be a university for Hope Restoration Ministries. An academy for leaders. Don't die with your story. Don't allow people to intimidate you. I refuse to be intimidated. My calling is not your calling. My assignment is not your assignment. This is what I said to one person. I said, but some of you, you are called for a local church. I'm not called for a local church. Look at the name of this church. You realize it's beyond the walls. Hope Restoration Ministries. How many people are in need of hope, Mr. Lord? Look at the calling. Look at the calling, Mr. Lord. Devoted citizens. It's beyond the local church. People matter. No matter who they are, where they are, how they are, this is beyond the local church. You better be ready to be disappointed if you think Nizoba Umfundi Sila. I'm I am called for the nations. I am called for the nations. If you don't believe, you better believe it today. 
I strongly believe the anointing of Moses is upon me. The anointing of Moses is upon me. Moses, go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Let my people go. I will never rest until God's people are free from poverty, as free in every area of their lives. I will never be quiet. I refuse. I refuse to take other titles. Bishop Moses. Bishop Moses. Because that is my assignment. I strongly believe that God's people must be delivered in every area. Not only spiritually, financially as well, psychologically. They told you that you are good for nothing. You are praying, you are fasting, but economically you are poor. That is not the best of God. God wants you to have a good life. It is my role and my responsibility to make sure that God's people, they live a wonderful life. That is the will of God. Father, we give you praise. Stretch your hands towards me. Thank you for these women. Thank you, O oh God, that they did not abort us. They did not abort those children. Because you've got a history that you are creating. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you all the glory. But here is the truth as we are closing. There are women here who have suffered a lot of pain. Some of you have gone through a serious abuse. You have been betrayed in the journey of womanship. You have suffered. Suffered abuse. A lot of things have happened in your life. Divorced by a husband at a young stage. You became a widow at a young stage. Forced to raise children on your own. The situation is not that easy. Circumstances are not that easy. You are saying, Pastor Matebula, I need the grace of God. Including those children who are still struggling, you did not receive the love of the mother. Some of you are still hurting because it's still fresh that you lost your mother last year this time. And you are not in the mood of celebration because you are still hurting, but you need a restoration. I want to pray with you. I'm going to ask the elders. Would you please, elders, come here. Come, we're going to pray for the people. May the grace and the favor of God be upon you all. I pray that may the good God continue to do you good, favor you. I pray that you are blessed coming in, blessed going out. Go out there and change the course of history. Go out there and change the course of history. Who knows that you are called for such a time as this? Don't take a rope and hang yourself, my dear. Those children, that marriage, it's depending on you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen and amen. Now, let's do this. Let's do this. You know you came after the offering has been collected. You can't go home without giving that offering. strategy and then if you need a prayer I want you to remain behind we're going to pray with you and the rest of you go enjoy yourself and happy Mother's Day and to those of you who do not have mothers may the Holy Spirit continue to comfort you in Jesus' name. My daughter, my son, 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 my